In this video, we are going to discuss the Kronig Penny model, an easily solvable periodic potential problem firstly proposed by Ralph Kronig and Lord Penny. In our discussion of Bloch's theorem, we focused on the eigenstates of electrons in a periodic potential and showed that they are plane wave like. Here, we are going to focus on the eigenvalues of Bloch states instead and take advantage of the Kronig Penny model to this end. This is the beginning of our discussion about the electronic structure of solids. Let's get started. We consider the Dirac delta version of the Kronig Penny model, whose potential is highlighted in the yellow box and plotted below. Without loss of generality, we take the lattice constant to be a unit length. We now ask the question, what are the electronic states in the Kronig Penny potential? To answer this question, we utilize the formalism developed in our discussion on Bloch's theorem. The Schrödinger equation in reciprocal space is shown in the blue box. The reciprocal lattice vectors for our 1D problem are as shown. The next step is to obtain the Fourier components of the Kronig Penny potential. This is easily done by inverse Fourier transforming the position dependent potential over a unit cell. This is given as follows. Therefore, the Fourier components of the Kronig Penny potential are independent of the reciprocal lattice vector indexes. Substituting the Fourier components into the Schrödinger equation, we obtain the central equation to the problem. Now, we can rearrange the terms and sum the full expression in G to obtain the following. Where we have defined E0 of K as the kinetic energy of free electron. We note that non-trivial solutions to the problem are found by requiring that the coefficient multiplying the summation over the Fourier components of the wave function, U of K minus G, vanish. This condition leads to the following. Which is the main equation for determining the energy eigenstates of the Kronig Penny problem, which we will do next. The equality can be rewritten in a format that enables us to easily perform the summation. To this end, we define the dimensionless variables kappa and v0 bar. The summation can then be recognized as the difference between the cotangent of the symmetric and antisymmetric combination of kappa and k. We can further simplify this expression through standard trigonometrical identities to bring the summation results into a more familiar form. Finally, we obtain the equation for determining the energies for a given momentum k for electrons in the Kronig Penny potential. This is shown here in the yellow box. We now analyze what the solutions tell us about the electronic states. First, we separated all terms involving the momentum k to the left-hand side of the equality sign, and all terms involving the normalized energy, kappa, to the right-hand side of the equality sign. In doing so, we obtain an interesting situation. While the left-hand side, the cos of k term, is bounded by 1, the right-hand side of the equation can be larger than 1. This can be seen more clearly by plotting the right-hand side of the equation explicitly by assuming some parameter values, as shown next. Here, we assume the lattice constant, a, to be 1, and v0 bar to be 2.63, without loss of generality. Note that the horizontal dashed lines are the bounds of the left-hand side of the equation. Therefore, the equality highlighted in the yellow box does not hold for all kappa values. In fact, the equality only holds in the light blue shaded regions show in the plot. This observation leads to the important conclusion that the state of electrons in the Kronig Penny potential are confined in energy bands separated by gaps. Here, the gaps are the regions where the equality in the yellow box is not valid. As shown in the plot. Although derived in the context of a simple one-dimensional model, this conclusion is a general feature of the electronic behavior in solids. More relevant to us is the so-called dispersion relation, the energy-momentum relation for block electrons. Such relation is also obtained by solving the yellow highlighted equation for the energy for varying k. Here is a plot of the dispersion relation obtained by solving the previous equation. For comparison purposes, we also added the plot of the previous slide. 
The distinct energy bands in the dispersion relation are the distinct eigenenergies of block electrons we discussed in the previous video. That is, each energy band can be labeled by a band index. This is shown in the figure above. Note that the gap in the dispersion relation refers to the smallest energy difference between distinct energy bands. For instance, the gap between the two bands with lowest energies, with band indices 1 and 2, occurs at k equal to pi and minus pi. The band gap between bands 2 and 3, however, occurs at k equals 0. The existence of energy gaps in the spectrum is a hallmark of electronic behavior in solids and is the beginning of our discussion of semiconductors, which we will leave for future videos. Their existence is connected to the strength of the potential, V0. This can be easily seen next. Here, the energy gaps are highlighted by light red shaded regions. The plots show that as the potential strength V0 decreases, the gaps shrink until they completely disappear at vanishing potential strength. The gaps originate from the interference of scattered traveling electron waves at specific momenta. In this video, we discuss the Kronig Penny model. You saw how the formalism developed in the derivation of Bloch's theorem can be used to solve for the electron states in a periodic potential. Also, a natural consequence of the formalism is the existence of energy gaps in the spectrum, which unavoidably arises by at finite periodic potential strengths. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.